So enough of you have asked. The little Z125 is finally gonna hit the racetrack, but the bike's never been to the track before and I haven't been in a number of years. So let's walk through how to best prep your street bike for your first track day. Now, obviously every bike is gonna be different. We're gonna be using the Z125 to prep, but a lot of the things I'm gonna talk about will also work for general sport bikes, even the supermoto that I'm taking with me. But I wanna show you on the Z125 because that's what most of you asked for, is to see the bike out on a mini kart track. This will just be a kart track that's in New Caney, Texas. Uh, it's called Speed Sports. We'll be out there in a couple days trying to just have some fun. Being as it is a mini moto event and it is a kart track, the regulations are different, but please check at every track day organization that you're running with to see what kind of requirements there are for tech specifications, gear specs, and just general bike prep. I'll go over the things that I think are the most widely used within the US. Europe and other locations will have different regulations too, but I've been at tracks all over the East Coast of the US. I have ridden with three different organizations, so I can give you some insight to what to expect when you get there. Now, you know your bike best, but some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to look for are things like the throttle and the brake. You wanna make sure that the throttle can move smoothly and snap back by itself. If there's any slowness to the snap back, you wanna address that with the cable. You wanna make sure that all of your brakes work functionally. That includes your rear brake. On race bikes, you might see that the rear brake reservoir doesn't have a whole lot of fluid to it because you don't really use your rear brake when you're on the track, but you do have to have a functioning rear brake for most sport bike tracks. It's a good idea to check your engine all over, look at the bottom of the engine, look by the drain bolt, look by the filter. You wanna find if there's any traces of oil. I haven't changed the oil in this bike in quite a while, so I wanna start the track day with fresh oil, so I'm gonna do a full replacement with the filter and the oil change, um, but when you're doing that, check the engine over, make sure there's no leaks anywhere. You wanna check if you have a water-cooled bike, you wanna to check to see on your water pump if you have any leaks of coolant too, so that's always a good thing to check for. You wanna feel your fork tubes, make sure there's no fluid coming down from the fork seals, that way you know that there's not fork oil leaking out. You wanna look at your rear suspension too, you wanna feel that around the base of it, see if there's any fluid coming out of the, fork, the, uh, the rear suspension too. You wanna check your brake pads, both front and rear, make sure you have enough meat on the pads, make sure that your rotors aren't really scratched or glazed over. While we're back here too, let's talk about tires. You might look at a tire and say, well, it's got plenty of tread. That doesn't necessarily mean that the tire is ready for the track. You wanna look at things too, like the date on the tire itself. There'll be a DOT number with four digits on it. That is the date stamp code for when the tire was produced. One good thing to do is also take your fingernail, stick your fingernail in the tire. If you can't stick your fingernail in it and it feels like a rock, replace that tire. On a track, these tires really are your life insurance. These are what keep you grounded. These are what help you turn, they help you stop, they help you accelerate. If your tires are old and dry, replace them. You do not wanna put your life at the risk of old tires. Obviously wanna check your chain tension too to make sure it's not too loose or too tight. This chain is very clearly too loose. So I'm going to want to adjust this before hitting the track. Now, all street bikes in the US are required to have a functioning headlight when the bike is on. You cannot have a lens cover that's exposed at most track day organizations. So we're gonna to wanna to tape this off as well as the turn signals. Not necessarily just to have the headlight blocked so there's no visibility to it, but a lot of tracks don't like to have the glass or plastic be able to be shattered if you were to happen to crash. So the tape helps keep it in one piece, makes it safe for everybody else on the track. The same goes for your tail light. Now I will show you a cool trick on how to just get the lights to stop working on the tail light. License plates too. License plates themselves are really sharp. They pose a hazard on the racetrack, so we're gonna remove the license plate. If you've got a fender eliminator kit like this, it might be easier just to detach the whole fender eliminator, pulling off the turn signals and the license plate all in one go. So I'm gonna take the seat off, I'm gonna show you how to do the tail light trick, and then also pull out the fender eliminator kit at the same time. Street bikes obviously have mirrors. That is more things to break, that is more wind resistance, that's more of a distraction. So we're gonna remove the mirrors. Most mirrors can come off with a couple bolts into the fairing stay. These mirrors are held on at the clamps for the brake lever, the brake reservoir, and the clutch lever. Depending on your bike and also your personality, you might find it to be a good idea to cover up your speedometer. It can be very distracting if it's your first time on the track to look down and go, hey, I'm going 150 miles per hour. But then you realize 
I'm going 150 miles per hour and I'm looking down and not where I should be. So if you take a piece of tape, you can cover up your speedometer. As long as you can still see your tachometer, you're in good shape, but nobody needs to see how fast you're actually going. Nobody really cares, it's a track day. There's no trophies for top speeds. You might notice that on this bike, I have frame sliders and axle sliders for both the front and rear axles. Those are not requirements. A lot of people suggest that you do that if you're going to be to going to the racetrack. However, there is a mixed opinion on that. Some people think that they become lever arms, and if you were to slide out in just a low, low speed crash, that once it hits the grass off the track, it'll cause the bike to flip over, and that could cause more damage than if it didn't have that and just slid. It might be a good idea to have frame sliders. It is not a requirement at any racetrack that I know of to have frame sliders. Now, there are some race organizations that require you to have case covers to prevent your engine cases from grinding through if they were to, to meet the pavement at some point. That is very specific to tracks, that's very specific to organizations. Again, ask the organization you plan to do a track day with if there are any requirements for specific things like that. I mentioned taping off the lights. Taping off the lights is almost always a requirement. Use painter's tape first. Painter's tape will go onto the light, it will not cause there to be any residue, it won't get stuck on, it won't get melted from the, the heat of the lamp. Now, you can get different colors. You can use masking tape, you can use blue painter's tape. If you want to be very matchy-matchy, this bike's all black and gray. Putting blue tape on it's going to look funny. Do I really care? Not really. But what I'm going to do is put black duct tape over the painter's tape. It's twice as much work, but it's going to look a lot cleaner at the end. You want to make sure that you overlap the pieces so that you can pull it off as one piece and it also prevents any light from coming through. Now I'm going to use a razor blade and trim off the excess. Do this very carefully so that you don't cut your fairings. Okay, maybe I do care. The blue doesn't match the bike. Let's do the black tape just for looks too. Again, don't do duct tape only. It will burn onto your headlight. It will not come off very easily. It is not a good idea. On some bikes, the turn signals are easy enough to remove that you don't have to worry about it. You can just take them off the side fairing. There's a simple plug and pull them off. But these are in the front fairing, and in order to take them off, I have to take off the whole front fairing. So what I'm gonna do is just tape these up like I did the headlight and call it a day on the turn signals. All right, turn signals are done, headlights done. Man, being all black, it actually makes it kind of hard to film this. <laughs> it just kind of disappears. So next up, we've got the mirrors. Like I said, I'm just going to pull the mirrors off because it's just one bolt for each right out of the perch. And then we can move towards the back. So as I mentioned, rather than taping off the turn signals and removing the plate, I'm just going to take the whole fender eliminator off. So let's pull off the seat, pull out the bolts and make that happen. So when we pull the fender eliminator off, you've got three sets of wires. You've got the turn signal for the left, the turn signal for the right, and then the license plate light. We have to trace those up through here and pull them out of the connectors. That way we can pull the wires all the way out and not have anything hanging loose while we're riding. While you've got your seat off, look for random things too that you might have kept in your bike. I've got a kickstand plate, but you might have a tool pack. Pull those types of things out. It's unnecessary weight because, you know, race bike. So taillights can be distracting. We could always tape it up like we did the headlight but when you hit the brake, it gets a lot brighter. So you have to worry that if you tape it, do you tape it good enough that none of the light shows through? There is an alternative, and that includes going into your fuse box and pulling the fuse for the, the tail light. Again, every bike is going to be different. This bike has only a few fuses, one for the regulator, one for the ignition, and one for the lamp. I'm going to pull just the lamp fuse, that way it's the tail light only. So let's pull it out. All right, with that fuse out, the tail light no longer works. The bike is on, the ignition is on, but the tail light does not light up. So we are good to go on that.
The few other things that I need to do to the bike, like the oil change and adjusting the chain can be done off camera. Basic things there is just saying, make sure your bike is safe for the road. Make sure there's no loose bolts. Make sure that everything is tight and within tolerances. Check your torque bolt or torque specs on the bolt of your drain plug for your oil pan. We don't want any oil coming out. If you're using a K&N oil filter, some tracks do not allow those. So check with the organization. Again, I feel like I'm putting a lot of this on specifics, but some tracks and track day organizations do not allow the running of K&N external oil filters because they're known to just explode. So keep that in mind. If you change your oil, use a different kind of oil filter if the track requires it. You do need a full face helmet when riding on the track. Some track day organizations require that the helmet be less than five years old as well. They might even check the manufacturer date inside the helmet. I would recommend having two shields. Have a tinted shield and also have a clear shield depending on the weather that you're riding in. Most tracks will not allow a modular helmet that opens up in the front. It has to be a complete full face helmet. Most track the organizations require gauntlet gloves. If you're getting into the sport for the first time, you can get an inexpensive pair that doesn't have a whole lot of features but just goes over the, over the wrist and over the sleeve. If you're looking to spend a little bit more money but get some more protective safety, the ones that bridge the pinky finger and the ring finger are a big plus and then there's multiple clasp systems for the wrist too so it's a much safer glove if you have the ability to do that track day boots are almost a must you would like to get something that has ankle protection that has sole protection uh, has the ability to really hug your foot and not have a whole lot of slipping going on but most importantly you do need a suit some track days do not require a full leather suit you could have a two-piece suit that zips in the middle so if you've already got a leather jacket for your street riding, look to see if you can find matching pants that zip into that, and then you could be good to go with the track day that you're at. One other thing to know about tires is the tire pressures are crucially important on the racetrack. Check with the website of your manufacturer for the tire, not the bike, the tire, to see what they suggest for tire pressures set cold. Monitor them throughout the day, make sure that they're not going up too high or too low. Once you get to the track, Try to talk to one of the control riders about tires too. They might have some suggestions for you based on that specific track that you're at, but always start as a baseline with what the manufacturer of the tire recommends. This one may sound stupid. Make sure you have your key. If you have a spare key, bring that too. I cannot count the times that friends of mine have showed up to the track and they forgot their key. Because during the prep work, they were taking everything apart. They took the key off, put it on their workbench, packed up, went to the track and forgot their key. That's how I learned how to hotwire a bike. Always make sure you have your key. I'm also not gonna walk you through what you should bring to the track. There are lots of resources for track day checklists. I'll actually put some list below in the description. So if you're really new to this and you don't know what to bring, check out the list that I put there down in the description. Make sure you bring everything that way you're safe, you're happy, and you have a good time at the track. Now that the bike is ready, let's load it up, let's get to the track, let's have some fun, and let's just go see what happens. Maybe I can drag knee. It's been seven years since I've had my knee on the ground on a racetrack. Who knows? Maybe I can do it on the Z. Maybe I'll have to try it on the Supermoto. We'll see what happens. 